Hi folks, it's Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. The average Christian today, and I use the word, the term Christian, lightly, because a real Christian will be known as a Christian the second he appears on the scene. If you are in a grocery store, and you are a real Christian, more than likely you will be approached by people and say to you, Are you a preacher? Are you a man of God? Are you a man of the cloth, some people would say today? Uh, where do you go to church? Uh, are you a preacher somewhere? And because uh, my uh, statement to them is, I am a lay preacher. I am an evangelist out of the church that I go to, and who am I an evangelist to? Mainly to those on the YouTube right here, and to those who I meet on a daily basis. <clears throat> and I am a soul winner. What is a soul winner? A soul winner is a man that's sold out to God to do his prayer work, do your prayer work, stay close to God, do your studying, get in the book, do a fast, a little fasting now and then, and to ask God to make you to be the one when you step out before a man that's lost and he is actually seeking God, looking for God, when he meets you, he will uh, pose the question himself. And uh, <clears throat> it's amazing how simple it is if you uh, get close to God. And the title that I put on this little excerpt is the old book. The old book, that's the old book, the old King James Version book of the Bible, still works, and only, it's the only Bible that still does work. If you have a new version of the Bible, it will not take you where I am today. It will not take you where I live today out of the old King James Version. Why do I live where I live today? Uh, the old King James Version because I can take all the verses that I follow today right now and put them in sequence <clears throat> and show you a pattern of life that works. I can take all of these same verses out of the new version of the Bibles, put them all together in a sequence and they won't take you to where I am today. They will take you to self works. Many of them won't take you anywhere. They'll just drop you off because of the words that have been left out or changed. I'm not on this tidbit today trying to defend uh, God's holy word. It defends its own self. It speaks for its own self. All of the old preachers of the past had lived by it, died by it, are in heaven by it. And we will meet them on the streets of gold one day. And we need to go by it. Salvation is not a bunch of steps. Twelve steps to salvation. No. There are steps that you can take to have joy after salvation. There are steps you can take to growth after salvation. But there are not twelve steps to salvation. There is one but one step. And that is when... God does stir your heart, and you know the Lord's the one speaking to your heart, and you say, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin, come into my heart, and save my soul. That's the only step that you have to take. Jesus said he is faithful to come from heaven and save your soul when you come to the realization you are a sinner. When you say, God, I am a sinner, forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul. I did that at 5 o'clock in the morning, 1972, November 5th. And I was right by myself, a drunk man. And God knocked on my heart and said, this is it, your number's up. I looked up to heaven and I said, God, I am a sinner. You know, I haven't swore a cuss word from that day to this, nor drunk, drank a drop of liquor. And God turned my life around and I've got healthier. And I'm getting healthier by the day. Lord willing, the Lord's going to make me good and healthy until the day he wants to take me home. And the day he wants to take me home, something's going to have to happen to this physical body so I can go through a physical death so that I can have a spiritual 
<laughs> awakening, a spiritual birth. The death of this body is the spiritual birth into heaven forever. I'm already, as I've said before, standing before God in the mirror that God has through the blood of his son Jesus. He has the mirror of my soul already in front of him. Now, we're looking at something the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 17. In Matthew 17, there was a man that came to the disciples. He was called a lunatic because he was crazy in the head because the devil had messed with his heart and messed with his head. And a demon, or many demons, had fastened themselves to him and got into him and these disciples had not done what it was required to get rid of this particular demon. And what was that requirement? Jesus said, except by fasting and prayer, this kind will come out. The problem in our today's life, in our life today, the biggest problem that I can see, including myself, is that we have put aside fasting we do sure, we pray and we pray a lot we pray oh, oh now I lay me down to sleep I pray to, uh, that my soul to keep if I should die before I wake ah, I pray that heaven you'll take me and and we pray those little prayers and we pray and we pray the Lord's prayer frivolously frivolously the prayer in Matthew uh, 6 and 9 it's not a prayer to be prayed frivolous. It is a prayer of recognition to God. I will get into that maybe a little bit in a bit. But right now, let's see what happened here. Uh, they needed full growth in their prayer life. In order to have full growth in your prayer life, there is something that's connected to the faith that you're using when you pray. And that's called fasting. Prayer and fasting are twins. They are twins. They are linked like this. If you're praying with no fasting, then your prayer may not go any further than the ceiling in your room that you're praying in. You must, you say, how do I fast, Brother Peter? Well, how you fast is you start going without something for food, mainly. Food, mainly. How would I start fasting if I wanted to, Brother Peter? You can fast breakfast. If you're a man that gets up every morning and eats a hearty breakfast, you can say, I'm going to fast breakfast today. And I'm going to talk to the Lord until dinner time. And then I'm going to eat. Set that pattern. And do that a few times. And then say, I'm going to fast breakfast and dinner today. And I'm going to talk to the Lord through breakfast and dinner. Do you know what's going to happen to you? You're going to get enough power in your life to fast a whole day. To fast breakfast, dinner, and supper a whole day. The power that will come on you and draw you to God and draw you in to the realm where you need to be so that you are close enough to God so people can recognize Something's different about you. Hey, when you start doing that, you're an ordinary man, goes to an ordinary job on an ordinary day. And as you go to that ordinary job every day, people see you. And uh, they say, you know, I think there's a little something different about Joe, but I haven't been able to pinpoint it yet. Well, when you start fasting, it won't be long, they'll pinpoint it. That Joe's a Christian. That Joe's following God. And Joe's gun got close to God. Wow. And now, you know, I've had this bad problem and I might can ask Joe about it. And you're going to find out that after you fasted a little bit, after you've practiced this a week or two, that people are going to ask, start asking you questions on the job. They're going to start saying, hey Joe, you know something? I, I understand it, that I believe you're a man of prayer. And you say, well, I pray, yes. And they're going to say, well, I, would you pray for me? And you know, I do right in the grocery store. I don't care where I am. Somebody asked me to pray for them. I put my hand on the shoulder 
and I bow my head and I pray. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a public place. Who cares? The devil's running all around you. Who cares if the devil hears you pray? Who cares about the devil? Don't worry about the devil. The devil came. Jesus fasted 40 days and nights and the devil hounded him for uh, a day or two there. He didn't just come to him a little bit and leave him. No, he came and he took him to the nth degree in temptation. And then he said, you know what? Ain't no point in me being here. I can't sway him. <laughs> and he took off and left him alone. And uh, so, that faith that, G that Jesus had, because he was God in the flesh, but nevertheless, the Bible said that God allowed him to be tempted in all points as all men are because he was in the flesh. He was in the flesh. Do you, 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 you remember what the first sin was? <laughs> the first sin was a mouthful of food. He bit the forbidden fruit and ate it and said, Mmm, this tastes is good. After God said, Don't eat it. God didn't say it wouldn't taste good, but he said what it will do to you will be worse than a bad case of physics. And it will be forever. And so, do not touch it. But they did. And food has come between man and God throughout the ages. And another thing, food has been a way to God throughout the ages. By abstaining from it, you can get closer to the Lord. You, you, you say, Brother Peter, you mean if I don't eat breakfast, uh, for one day a week, for a month, four times a month, that I can get closer to God? Absolutely. It might be a micro step, but you can. But micro steps come into master steps after a while. But you can start somewhere, start small, and get bigger. I tell you what, I have been fasting now since 1973 from cigarettes. <laughs> I gave the cigarettes up. And I'm not going to touch them anymore ever again. Not ever will I ever put a cigarette in this mouth. Because God showed me they were a God before Him. Did you know those little, little cigarettes lied to me? They said, if you smoke one of me, I'll satisfy you. But 15 minutes later, that it, it say it again, and again, and again, and again. That is a, a, a lie in this thing in the world. There's 20 lies in a pack of cigarettes. 20 cigarettes in there, and they're all liars. They all say, I'll satisfy you, and none of them will. They don't satisfy you. You get a temporary buzz, and that, that's it. And then you, a few minutes later, you got to have another one. Hey, if that's not a God before God, what is now, we got this other thing. Food is a necessity. Food is a necessity for this body. But there is another necessity for this body, and that's to purge it. To purge this body. Why do you change the oil in your car? Because it's wore out. Because it's not doing anymore exactly what it was designed to do. And so you change it. Well, when you change the oil in your car, you renew it. You refresh it. And that's the same way with this body. You fast for a day. Drink water that day. God's uh, uh, provision. God's provision. Water. Water. God's provision. My mama was 96 when she went to heaven. Spent one day in the hospital that I know of other than to have a baby. At 96, she drank four to six of these, uh, even eight a day, every day. Water. Brother Lester Roloff, one of the healthiest men I ever met in my total life, drank this every day. Did a lot of fasting. Probably, I don't know of any other man that I would say that probably fasted 40 days on in this modern day and age. Because Brother Lester Roloff didn't let nobody know what he was doing. But, but I've seen the man go days and never touch a bite. Hey, this man was a man of God. 
and did great wonders, marvelous wonders in this world for the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Lord until the Lord took him home one day. And the Lord left. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tapes of his that I can listen to on a daily basis from a man of God. And I listened to some tape just a little while ago. I just got down listening to a tape of a 2003. One of the best messages for the church I ever heard in my total Christian life. And so, feed ourselves. What do you feed yourself with? Do you feed yourself with power drinks? Do you feed your flesh with power drinks? Do you feed your flesh with the things of the world that they've got today to give you a buzz? Or do you seek out to eat what's good for you and then flush your body out once a week maybe? Have a day you picked out for a fast day. That you're going to fast that day and drink some water. You're going to clean your system out. You're going to get the poisons out of your system. Hey, fasting is for more than just being in connection with God. It's in being, it's refreshing your body. It's changing your oil. You need to change your oil. If you, if you, you might not believe this, but your heart does more work in one week in your body than your motor does in your car taking you to work and back. And you need to fresh it out. You need to flush it out. You need to put some water to it. Water is oil for the heart. I'm way off of my spiritual subject. But what good are you spiritually if you're no good physically? So you've got to be good physically to be good spiritually. And God will heal up your body. I'm 72 and I can work beside any 30 year old out there today. I don't care who he is. If he's 30 years old, I don't care how healthy he is, how hard he can work. I work right beside him. And uh, chances are a lot of them I'll outwork them because they're going to stop and smoke. And I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and while they lose an hour and a half to two hours a day smoking cigarettes and hurting their body, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. I could be on a fast day. And just have a drink of water or two during the day and still outwork that person. Why? God is with the man that will give him preeminence. We've got to give God preeminence. Our time is getting very close here. I've got to go. Fasting from food. Jesus said, if you guys will fast for some food, I will do some things. That's called chastening the soul. Let's look at a, a scripture uh, that talks about chastening the soul. David, in, in uh, Psalm 35, talked about chastening his soul. In Psalm 35, let's see what he says here. In Psalm 35, he says, Psalm 35 and 13, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothes were sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned unto my own bosom. Listen, he humbled his soul with fasting. He said his prayer was returning to his own soul. Uh, and, and he needed some power. So he went to fasting. Over in Psalm 69, when I wept and chastened my soul, I wept and chastened myself with fasting that was to my reproach. He, listen, when you start doing things in the Lord Jesus Christ and for God with your body like fasting, you're going to be, people are going to laugh at you. They're going to say, oh, look at that knot. I guarantee you what, in a month or two, those people that have said that to you are about you and you hear about them you can go knock on that door and visit them. You haven't got to tell them you heard what they said about you, but you can go show them a healthy body. You can go show them a spiritual body. You can go knock on their door and be nice. And if you're welcomed in, you can talk about the Lord a little bit and just say, I thought I'd come by and talk about the Lord a little bit and say, well, perhaps I hadn't seen you in church for a couple weeks. Uh, perhaps I heard you've had a little little problem or I want to come out and pray for you. And show yourself what fasting does. 
Fasting will show up. If you fast, it will show up in your life, in your power. It will show up in the power you have in your life. My goodness, the weeks that I fast, and when I fast, and I, I get out on the street, and I'm at a gas pump, and I, 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 I pull up behind a guy, and I take one of my tracks out that, that I always carry, and, and uh, I take a track out, and I say, Sir, uh, do you know the answer to this question? If you died right now, would you go to heaven? You know what? That person many a times will say to me, no, but I'd like to. Wow! <laughs> the door is open. You know what God did for me that morning? Or that day? He had me go to that particular gas pump where that particular man was and pump some gas. Many, many times the Lord will keep me. I, I'm ready to leave for an hour, an hour and a half, and I can't get away. And then God will say, okay, it's time to go. And I'll take off. And I'll pull in a gas station. And God might say, you're in the wrong station. That's crazy. I've done pulled up to the pump. And the Lord say, go down across the highway. I'll pull out of that pump. Go down and pull up to another pump. And get out and pull a track out. And the guy's ready to be saved. Or the guy wants to talk about the Lord. Or he's been thinking about going to church. Or there's some reason that I'm there. Fasting and prayer gets the attention of the Lord. All the way over into the New Testament, in Matthew, and, and uh, in Matthew, uh, then the devil taketh him, it said. Jesus had fasted forty days and nights. And in the Bible said it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Jesus says this in Matthew chapter 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Where are those words? They're in this Bible. Those words are in this book. How can you live by every word if you're not putting it in? Have you got a daily practice of getting up in the morning? I get up in the morning. I can get up. At, if I'm up at five minutes I have to find my wife's already sitting on the couch. Already got her Bible on. Already doing her daily Bible reading. She reads through the Bible every year. And then, and then and on top of that, when after she reads her daily Bible reading, she gets out a, a daily book that gives some scriptures and some things for living for that day. And she reads that. It said, then the devil took him on a high pinnacle. Let me tell you a little story. When you start fasting, you're going to meet the devil. He's not troubling you right now. You know why? Because you're not gaining in power. When you start gaining in power, you're going to attract his attention. And when you attract his attention, he's going to come after you. And when he comes after you, he's going to try his best to whip you. But you don't have to let him whip you. Jesus didn't. Jesus said, it is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Then said Jesus unto him, talking to Satan, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. We are worshiping today everything but God. If you're not careful, you worship the car you drive. You drive down the road with a symbol on the front of your car that says you can put your thumbs under your arm and say, look at me. I'm driving this or that car. And I'm driving such and such a car. Look at me. That's what these cars say today. I have, my wife has, the Lord gave us a Lexus for about a, a, a third of what it should have cost us. And, and and we had to reckon a little old bitty junky thing that a person shouldn't even own, shouldn't even be in as a death trap, and, and ended up losing it and it took that little bit of money that we had and God opened the door and gave us a lesson. You know, I have to be careful. I don't get proud riding down the road in my Lexus. It was a gift from the Lord, a nice car and a good car. 
But God is the one that gets the credit for it. Anybody says to me, wow, you drive an Alexis? I say, yeah, God gave it to me. <laughs> and God can give us, give you a Alexis if he wants you to have one. If he knows you ain't going to swell up with pride and go around and brag about it. I'm going to brag about it, yes, that God gave it to me. And uh, so, uh, let's see. You know the church in Antioch in Acts 13, 1 through 5. Going over into the New Testament, into Acts uh, 13, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and, go, and it goes on. And we need to uh, know the books of the Bible. We need to be able to dip in to the Bible and go to a scripture in a, in a, a quick period of time. How do you do that, Brother Peter? You do it by practice. You do it by doing it often. If you do it often, on a daily basis, if you didn't get, do anything in the morning but get your Bible out and turn to Matthew, turn to Mark, turn to Luke, turn to John, turn to Acts, turn to all of the books and learn them. Open the front of your Bible. It, there's 27 books in the New Testament. You can learn the order of those books. One of the first things you can do and learn how to get in to the Bible. Where were we going? We were going to 13, 1 through 5. Now, there were in Antioch, in the church that was at Antioch, a certain prophets and teachers as Monobus and Simon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manna which had been brought up with Herod the Tetric and Saul as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. You see, when they had fasted, they got separated to where they needed to be. And probably Paul and Barnabas were the ones that were doing the fasting. And God says, Separate these men and send them out to do the work that I have called them to do. Alright. Uh, and this was Paul's first ministry. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Now we see everybody fasting and praying and laying their hands on Paul and Barnabas and sending them out. And, and when they were at uh, Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had also John, their minister, and when they had gone through the Isle of uh, Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, uh, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the county. And, and Sergio Paulus, and he was a prudent man who uh, called of Barabbas, Barnabas, excuse me, and Saul, and desired to be heard the word of God. Let's see, and the sauce, I need to get on down because my time is about out. Uh, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, fool, of all sobriety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him uh, by hand. Listen, when after Paul had prayed now, and they, they got some power, this is what did. Now listen to this. Uh, Paul and his company loosed from Pergamos, and they came to Perga and Pamphylia, and John departed from them and returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Antioch, and after the reading, and my time has come and gone, you find that story in Acts chapter 13, and find out what happened to that guy. You know, Paul was blinded uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ, 
And then when his eyes were open, he could see spiritually. Our time's come and gone. It's Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. See you next time. Bye-bye.